Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you to remain in your seats and take a moment of silence to prepare ourselves before we begin our Eucharistic celebration. Thank you all to stand and join in our opening hymn.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May God help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty, ever grieving God, who will that throw water the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gifts of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us and grant the, that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body. And so approach, approach your with hearts made clean and worthily receive your salvation through Christ our Lord.
may Almighty God cleanse us for our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no, no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in, in all things and above all things, we may attain your provisions which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Lectura del profeta Ezequiel. Me vino esta palabra del Señor. Mostraré la santidad de mi nombre grande, profano entre los gentiles, que vosotros habréis profanado en medio de ellos. Y conocerán los gentiles que yo soy el Señor, oráculo del Señor, cuando les haga ver mi santidad al castigaros. Y conocerán los gentiles el oráculo del Señor. Os recogeré de entre las naciones, os reuniré de todos los países y os llevaré a vuestra tierra. Derramaré sobre vosotros un agua pura que os purificará de todas vuestras inmundicias e idolatrías os he de purificar. Y os daré un nuevo corazón, y os daré un nuevo espíritu. Arrancaré de vuestra carne el corazón de piedra, y os daré un corazón de carne. Y os infundiré mi espíritu, y haré que caminéis según mis preceptos, y que guardéis y cumpláis mis mandatos, y habitaréis en la tierra que di a vuestros padres, y vosotros seréis mi pueblo, y yo seré vuestro Dios. Perbum Domini. Thank you. 
From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to Lord. Jesus began to speak to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a feast for his son's wedding. He sent his servants to call those who had been invited, but they would not come. Next, he sent some more servants. Tell those who have been invited, he said, that I have my banquet all prepared. My oxen and fattened cattle have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding but they were not interested. One went off to his farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was furious. He dispatched his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burnt their town. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but as those who were invited proved to be unworthy, go to the crossroads in the town and invite everyone you can find to the wedding. So these servants went out onto the roads and collected together everyone they could find, bad and good alike. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. The Gospel of the Lord.
today is a day of families and love. Love endures all things, while strong marriages make strong societies. Today, we are to focus our attention on the reality of the family and love. Experiencing love is called to be at the heart of the Christian family. No experience is, ne is as necessary for family as the experience of love. Father, mother, sons, and dogs experience the gospel of the family when they daily try to concretely manifest love. And it is in this way that the family becomes joy for the world. In March of last year, Pope Francis, in his letter preparing for this meeting, wrote to my brother, Cardinal Kevin Farrell, asking two questions that he later tried to answer. Does the gospel continue to be joy for the world? Does the family continue to be good news for today's world? To seek a true answer to these questions, in that same letter, the Pope expressed the desire that families could depend their reflection and their sharing on the contents of the post synodal apostolic exhortation Amoris Laetitia, the joy of love. We are very happy because we see that this world meeting of families has placed it is center, at the center, this apostolic exhortation that refers to the family as a place for the joy of love. Thank you, Cardinal Farrell. Thank you, Archbishop Dermont, Martin, for your care to this letter. In fact, with the Pope, we experience that the gospel of Jesus continues to be joy for the world, and that the family continues to be good news for today's world. Francis speaks to us in this way. The love of God is his yes to all creation. And at the heart of this letter, this letter is man. It is God's yes to the union between man and woman in openness and service to life in all its two phase, its phases. It is God's yes and his commitment to a humanity that is often wounded, mistreated, and dominated by a lack of love. The family, therefore, is the yes of God as love. Only by starting from love can the family manifest, spread, and regenerate God's love in the world. Without love, we cannot live as children of God, as couples, parents, and brothers. In this Eucharist today, in which there are so, so many families 
making they, their way on that interior pilgrimage of a search for an authentic life, we can affirm that love gives strength that is substance to all things. It is for this reason that strong marriages support a strong societies. Amoris Laetitia reminds us no one can think that weakening of the family as a natural society founded on marriage will prove beneficial to society as a whole. The contrary is true. It poses a threat to the mature growth of individuals, the cultivation of community values, and the moral progress of cities and countries. What does one do, however, in a time week like ours, in which all values seem not only to become fluid, fluid, but even gaseous? In particular, in particular way, this happens in the family. For many today, abandoning the gospel, even after a long experience of faith, seems to be progress and the requirement of current culture. The strength of power, money, or an ideology accented by seductive propaganda seem to empty every other conviction on the values that have built life in the family for millennia. At most, one acknowledges that the values of religion, and in particular of Christianity, remain within the scope of individual convictions. However, we know that these are the values that support the possibility of life, of happiness, and of true joy. Love experienced and lived in the family gives stability to marriage, and in turn, always tend to build stable, strong societies that serve the people. Every day, the Pope reminds us we experience frailty and weakness. And for this reason, all of us, families and pastors, need a, re a renewal, humility that shapes the desire to form ourselves to educate and be educated, to help and to be helped, to accompany, discern, and integrate all men of goodwill. Let us call the mind to mind some considerations of synodal fathers and of Pope Francis in the Apostolic Exhortation Amoris Laetitia that show us the concrete difficulties of the family in these times. Today, in their emotional and family life, individuals are less supported by social stru structures than in the past. The presence of an exaggerated individualism distorts family ties this distorts family ties and gives prevalence to the idea of a subject that her own desires. Lasting family bonds are often seen as unnecessary. But even we Christians have often presented marriage, marriage more in its duty of procreation that in this unity goal, with the invitation to grow in love and in, in the ideal of mutual help. The accompanying of the spouse in their first years was lacking. We have presented a high but far-reaching ideal of concrete situations and actual possibilities. 
Even today, we find it difficult to present marriage more as a dynamic part to personal development and fulfill, fulfillment than in its lifelong burden. Among the, among the many challenges, we remember, we remember the educational role, drug addiction, alcoholism, gambling, gender ideology. In the midst of these difficulties, in the word of God, the family finds sure guidelines to identity paths of growth and to renewed strength. The word of God in today's Eucharist is offered to us by the prophet Ezekiel and Matthew's gospel. The prophet Ezekiel lived the experience of the Babylonian exile with the people of Israel. He was a time of distrust and of a crisis of faith. The destruction of Jerusalem seemed to question the faithfulness and promises of God. In the words of the prophet, the name of God was profaned in the midst of the nations and also profaned by the people of Israel among them. But the Lord, the Lord God will show his holiness in the people of Israel before they rise, their eyes. The peoples return to Lord, the, the people's return to Lord will be possible because he himself will purify them and give them a new heart. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I will put within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. So for people to live the holiness of God is not an unattainable goal. Our times are similar to the prophet's time with the temptation of mistrust in the crisis of faith in the face of difficulties concerning the family. If we make the joy of love grow in the family, the holiness of God will be shown in the sanctity of the family. It is a holiness constructed in the midst of everyday difficulties. It is the holiness of souls who have decided in their hearts to return the human divine experience of love to the family. In this love, the Lord himself will form a heart of flesh and not of stone in every family member. The family wedding banquet is already prepared. With instance, the Lord repeats his invitation to come and participate to all his people, fathers, mothers, sons, and daughters. The heart of flesh, attentive to the living invitation, loving invitation, does not allow itself to be distracted by the care of the fields and business, nor does it place itself in opposition to those we have already entered the wedding banquet. All families with more or less difficulties, with more or less problems, are called to this banquet on the Son of God in which they will definitively participate in the kingdom of heaven. The world meeting of the families of Dublin, which we are building together, with many others, will mark a precious moment of growth of our Christian hope to protect and again experience the beauty of the family as the Lord wants it to be. It is way, it, in this way, the gospel will continue to be joy for the world and the family will continue to be good news for today's world. All of us 
however, have the task of working with a heart of flesh close to the family, to all families, particularly close to the families who are experiencing the greater difficulties and obstacles. I invite you to calmly meditate on the hymn of charity in St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. In this hymn, we find some char characteristics of true love that are developed by the Synod Fathers in the Exhortation Amoris Laetitia. The challenges to grow in the conjugal charity contained in Amoris Laetitia are also very beautiful. May the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be our light. Amen. The love of our God will never leave us, nor fade away. In confidence them, we bring our prayers before him. Rezemos por uma maior estima dos dons concedidos a todo o corpo de Cristo, sua igreja, e pelo aumento das vocações ao sacerdócio ministerial e à vida religiosa. Por los esposos, para que su amor fiel sea un signo visible del amor de Dios y una inspiración para sus hijos y sus próximos. Tous les immigrants et réfugiés dans notre pays et ailleurs dans le monde, qu'ils puissent vivre dans la paix et la sécurité. Per le nostre sorelle e per i nostri fratelli ammalati e per tutti coloro che sono gravati da situazioni difficili, perché possiamo noi incarnare la compassione di Cristo per loro. That we may listen to Pope Francis's call to take seriously our own personal responsibility for the care 
of the earth, our common family home. Our son, Nanini, a well denyam, winterha, yo calcha. August, our son, Baal, dar jarli, ata emihe rowing, gosio, nashiri octa, August, korha, and kraji, orhu. pray for a moment in silence, remembering speci especially those around us and all those we have asked our prayers. Lord God, source of compassion, listen to our prayers in all our in all our needs, it is to you whom we turn. For you show us the face of love and mercy in your beloved Son. We ask this throughout the same Christ, our, our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of this church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give us. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus, Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word, by word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as we doubt and we acclaim. are indeed holy and to be glorified, O oh God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed your, is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the, the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that, that they, they may come. become for us the body, body and blood, blood of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. On the day we before he was to Jesus. suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took the bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take his, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, your thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this of you and drink from me, for this is chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins to this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memory of Christ your Lord, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and deed of the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the cherish of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the Paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed unto us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in all his body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect charity and faith, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jermot, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Acuérdate también, Padre, de nuestros hermanos que murieron en la paz de Cristo y de todos los demás difuntos cuya fe solo tú conociste. Admítelos a contemplar la luz de tu rostro y llévalos a la plenitud de la vida en la resurrección. Y cuando termine nuestra peregrinación por este mundo, recíbenos también a nosotros en tu reino, donde esperamos gozar todos juntos de la plenitud eterna de tu gloria, en comunión con la Virgen María, Madre de Dios, su Esposo San José, los apóstoles y los mártires, Y todos los santos, te invocamos, Padre, y te glorificamos por Cristo, Señor nuestro. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the, the unity, unity of, of the Holy Spirit, Spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious will grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live, who live and re reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. May the partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his choirs in heaven who lives in rain and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord be a sure path beneath your feet a bright light before you, a kindled shepherd behind you, this day, this night, and always. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you, you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Praise be to God.